Hi, uh, in this video we will calculate the area of a circle uh, using a classical method of randomly uh, drawing points and counting how many fall within the circle. So let's start by drawing a circle. Uh, in I figures you simply write circle and actually the default circle uh, is located at uh, 0 and 0 and has a radius uh, of 1 which is uh, kind of suitable for us. And now what we want to do uh, is randomly uh, shoot points around. Uh, so we need something that creates random numbers. Uh, this is uh, simply the random command. So you just write random and open parentheses, close parentheses, and it just draws randomly numbers between 0 and 1. Uh, if we kind of want to cover uh, the whole circle, we want random numbers between minus 1 and 1. So um, we can just multiply this by 2. Uh, this will give us numbers between 0 and 2. And then if we uh, subtract 1, we will get numbers that are between minus 1 and 1. Uh, so what we can do now is now each time uh, draw a random number like this between minus 1 and 1. And then draw a point. Let's try that. So uh, let's call that x, let's say. And then we will give it this random number. Let's try that. So now we can put x here and see if this works. So each time we run this code now, it will draw a number which is somewhere between minus 1 and 1. Uh, and then this, it, which, this just gives us an x value. If we want to draw a point, we also have to choose a y value. We will just uh, also randomly choose y between one, minus 1 and 1. So just the same thing okay and then let's draw the point so this you can do with just a point uh, x and y and the default will be blue uh, so let's give it a different color let's say red okay let's try that okay now each time we get a random point uh, let's repeat this many times so maybe uh, let's call this uh, some better name, uh, random point, okay? And just repeat this, random point. Uh, we need to open parentheses and close parentheses. Let's see. Okay. So now points are drawn randomly. And if we just keep on doing this, they will cover the square between minus one and one. Uh, that's a good start, but now we kind of need to decide for each point uh, whether it is in the circle or outside the circle. So let's start by just trying to uh, find which one is inside and outside. And according to, uh, to whether it is in or out, we will uh, color it in a different color. Let's try that. So let's clear this, uh, run this. Actually, it will be annoying to each time press this trash can, so let's add the clear figure to the beginning of this of this code. So clear figure is just CLF, which is short for clear figure. And also maybe uh, call this refresh or something like this. Okay, refresh. So every time we do refresh, we get this new uh, clean uh, circle. Okay, so now we want, after we choose the point, we want to check whether it is inside or outside. And the criterion uh, for being inside a circle with radius of 1 is if uh, the distance from the center to the point is less than 1. And with the Pythagoras theorem, we can just uh, calculate the distance. So maybe we can just calculate the distance. Let's call it D. And that is square root of x squared plus y squared. And one, what we want to check is if d is less than 1, then we are inside the circle, then we will draw a point, let's say, which is red. So red is inside the circle. Else, if it is not inside the circle, we will draw a point which is, let's say, green. Okay, if this works, then only points which are inside the circle will be red. Let's see if this works. Okay, so one point will be hard to tell, but let's run this fast. And see. Okay, this looks pretty good. So 
we now can distinguish points which are inside the circle or outside the circle. Okay, so now all that is left to do is to count how many fall in and how many fall out. That should be pretty easy. So we need some kind of counter. So uh, let's call this, uh, we, we, need, we kind of need to count all of the points we, we draw and also how many fell inside the circle. So uh, let's call all n all, and it starts from zero when we begin. And also, the, and we need to call something for those inside, let's call that n in, and that starts also from zero. Okay, and now the first thing, each time we draw a random point, of course, uh, it means we made another draw, so n all needs to grow by one. So the way we do it is n all plus equals one. Okay, let's try that. So let's see what happens to n all. And we run this. So you see each each time this is drawn, n all grows by one. This is good. Okay. Uh, but if the point is inside, we also need to uh, increase the counter of how many are in. Let's also write here an in, which now is just zero because we set it to zero. Uh, so if d is less than one, which means the point is inside the circle, we also need to say that n in grew by one. Okay. Good. Let's restart. Okay. So now we can we see how many are inside and how many are outside. Okay, what's the fraction of the ones in compared to the ones out? That is just n in divided by n all. You can see this is the fraction. This is roughly the fraction of points which are inside the circle. This is also the relative uh, uh, fraction of area that the circle covers compared to this square. So now if we want to know the area of this uh, of this circle, let's call this S, S equals. So this is the area of the square times the fraction which constitutes the circle. So what's the area of the square? The square is a two by two square. So the area is four times this fraction, which is N in divided by N R. And this is roughly the area of the circle. Now, any of us who knows math should know that if we have a circle of radius uh, one, then the area should be pi r squared or just pi. So the computer already knows how much pi is. So uh, we can just check what the computer thinks this should be. So this is pi. This is of course a number you probably know, 3.14, blah, 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 blah. And this is our numerical approximation. You can see with time, it becomes better, but it converges pretty slowly. Now, can we do this? I mean, this is nice, but I don't know if it's satisfying. Can we do this uh, faster? Uh, and the answer, of course, is yes. Uh, let me give you a hint, and I suggest you do it yourself. There is no real reason that uh, we, if we just want to calculate the number, there is no real reason we need the graphics. So we can lose the graphics, just keep the point, the counters. Another thing is that here we're using a time-based loop where we increase each point of one seconds, uh, the number of points. If you use uh, the inherent loops to JavaScript, like a while or a for loop, you can do this much, much, much uh, faster. But I leave that to you. Uh, thank you.